Last time I was out on the buggy, we, we did about 200 miles, and I noticed a little uh, noise, a new noise. And like I always say, if, uh, if you hear a new noise when you're out, stop, check it out. Uh, I did that and uh, figured I'd make it home. And uh, so now it's time to investigate because I know somebody will ask me, hey, you want to go for a ride? And I won't be ready. And I won't know what my issue is. Uh, I think it's a brake drum. I'll show you why here in a minute. And I think what we're going to try is to put those disc brakes that I bought uh, back around Christmas uh, on the back of this buggy. And uh, let's get started. Get this, uh, get this wheel off. <coughs> feel as I go and especially okay now with an impact wrench I might not have felt that this is that was real soft there was hardly any torque on that at all and now those are the kinds of clues that I'm feeling for I have an issue I want to find out what it is this one's a little tighter but you know pretty easy tightening on that one a little harder on the lowers. This one was easy. All of these were not very tight. Which, well, let's just keep going. <laughs> That's why I'm doing this, right? I want to find out what's going on. I really like these speed wrenches, though. I'm all in favor of uh, these babies. I like them. I'm sure everybody knows that these uh, retainers, these seal retainers, uh, they have a certain way that they go on. You want to have the top and the bottom, the flat spots up and down. I'm pretty sure those are square, but they might not be. Alright, I'm just going to... Man, I had my brakes working pretty good too. I did not want to uh, completely take all this apart. Great, we get to compete with the lawnmower. Alright, uh, my neighbor is done playing with his lawnmower and uh, this is what we've got so far, and it is warm enough out there. Now, <laughs> one thing I should probably say right off, as with all aftermarket things, especially things that aren't the old original German, regardless of where they are, don't think for a second that this is just going to be slapping this thing together, uh, taking off the old and, and just bolting up and it's going to work and fit just fine there's going to be some hand fitting involved and if you're paying somebody else to do this job for you and they come to you with uh, uh, an extra labor charge uh, don't be balking uh, these did not fit this is a stamp casting it looks pretty because it's uh, anodized with this uh, pretty plating but I had to uh, hand file you could use a Dremel power tools but I'm just <laughs> I'm just home at my shop myself so I just took a file had to get all the burrs when you stamp something and that last little pit goes through you can see the edge over here you just they don't do any handwork this is all machine just wham bam stamped out thrown in a box and shipped so you're gonna have to do the final fitting and it doesn't make any difference if uh, these plates and stuff are you know a little off um, I had a little trouble getting the original screws in, but it all fit together, and uh, I'll take you off the 
the stand here and show you what I got. Sorry about the the noise here. Let's see if I can do this without disturbing things too much. That wasn't too bad. This is not installed. It's just the first fitting. I have the uh, the bracket installed, and this is what it's going to look like. Uh, caliper sitting hanging out here and this setup in as a whole is going to be about 10 or 11 pounds heavier than stock and to me that is a big no-no but this is a cast please a cast piece uh, rotor and it's heavy and you can see the casting here this is heavy and this is also obviously the model with the emergency brake setup so all that's going to add to the weight and that's unsprung weight that your spring has to deal with and when you're going down those washboard roads it just means it's not going to follow probably as quickly of course nothing seems to follow last weekend I felt like I was sitting in a paint shaker the whole time <laughs> but uh, you go faster and you skip over the tops right smooth it out fly low but that's where we're at so far and uh, we'll keep going here and I'll keep you posted why do I always push that darn record button before I'm ready get your, uh, get your torque crunch out that's that's all ready and you had it in stored in your drawer with the tension backed off now we're at 25 foot pounds it says and I had to file out that bracket to make it work I'm not replacing the seal although it did come with a seal kit. I was pleased with that. It uh, just informed me that uh, if you have an IRS setup, you're supposed to. It does not furnish a 30 inch brake line. Now, as you'll recall, I was using this with the drum to adapt a short spline drum with. Uh, to an IRS axle. What I did was buy an extra set of these axle spacers. This is for a swing axle and it comes with a wider spacer than what I had on there. This is special hardened steel. It fits tight. It centers. That's going to eliminate that problem with my axle nut not running out of threads. And, and fitting on here better and uh, I'm happy about that I'm just gonna snug this on I'm not gonna do the final tightening of course um, I did figure I'm done with that inner part that looks nice you got these uh, let me get another pair got these pinch clips I really don't like the looks of these pads. Let me make sure that you can see this. Okay, what you got here are these retainer clips. They go on the back of these pads. And they both are on the outside, which means they should be interchangeable. At the risk of looking stupid, let's just do this together. I actually got the directions out. tried skipping the directions, taking a shortcut, putting the pads in first. It says do not do that. It says take the take the top one out completely, loosen the bottom one, a couple of turns. can close the caliper. The tension springs on the pads will push against the inside 
of the top caliper and provide some resistance. This is normal. The tension spring holds the pads in place. Reinstall the top bolt. See detail below. Mm -hmm. All right. I see the tension. Pretty cool, actually. Pretty cool. Okay. In case you weren't following that, let me give you a close up. <laughs> you know, first time's always a struggle. Alright. Maybe I'll just edit this whole thing and just show the other side now that I've learned what I'm doing. Okay, comes with a sheet, the destruction sheet. holder I know they make some better equipment than that now they have those real slick uh, gear drive torque meisters multipliers but this worked for me and I'm thinking back years and years ago when I brought home that 36 inch torque wrench surprised myself at what when you get a cheater how that multiplies your strength so I get it cranked a little bit and then I look for the nearest hole. Not sure where we left off. Went to lunch and uh, came back and bled the uh, brakes. I couldn't believe how quickly they bled out and how quickly that pump came up. So uh, it didn't miss much. I just threw the tire on and picking up some tools here. And we'll take her out for a test drive. Just doing a little test drive on the buggy. This is the day after. I can't believe I hosed up something that was so simple, but I did. I got those pads in. Sometimes they'll really make a racket, but uh, this feels pretty good. I'm gonna throw a few arrows down at the target and just add my burrito. So, uh, kind of a late start. People are already here. That sucks, but oh well. Talk to you soon. Easy Jeezy out. Just got out of the shower, 
change clothes. We got our little get together here in a couple hours, and uh, I wanted to wrap this uh, disc brake thing up. Uh, I apologize, but uh, I got to do the liability disclaimer commentary now, and uh, I really don't recommend that anybody does things the way I do on their car especially if you're driving it on the street or you're doing this installation for somebody else um, so you know what I've done might not be correct from a, a legal standpoint you when you're talking something as important as brakes uh, you should put the proper brakes the way the manufacturer designed them and made them uh, use those parts on the vehicle that you're working on whatever year it is and I have to say that uh, it would be unsafe uh, if somebody were to get in an accident uh, not only could you have legal issues but you'd probably feel pretty lousy too and I don't want any of you to uh, follow my path and then hear about it later that something terrible happened so there we go got to say that part and to wrap it up I did take the buggy for a spin around the block and jam the brake several times uh, here's what they look like on the car uh, <laughs> and what I see is a blob of weight <laughs> kind of artful and creative but uh, nonetheless they're 10 pounds heavier than what the drums were and I wouldn't say that they work any better than the drums at all no I would not uh, it's just that I was using uh, five hole drum arrangement on an IRS system I was using you know 45 50 year old drums that were used and I made them last as long as I could and uh, maybe made some judgment errors uh, and didn't check them quite as often and they got uh, worn out in the spline area so I had bought these uh, got a pretty good price there's another another video maybe I'll put this together like a, a oh what do they call that playlist so that you can follow this from the beginning don't have to repeat myself here um, but they bled real easy and you see that custom brake line that uh, that really saved me a lot of time and it's still <laughs> I still messed around all day but a buddy came over and we went to lunch and stuff so anyhow they they look kinda cool um, I suppose if you backed into a bush you could snag that line and I may I may tighten that up a little bit but for now uh, that's the way I did it and I'm using short spline uh, hubs on a long axle long spline axle IRS hub um, axle so what I did was put that spacer from a swing axle between the nut and the hub so that I could get the 250 pounds torque on that nut so that I don't have the same issue reoccurring. Uh, another thing I probably shouldn't have done was use this type of brake master cylinder. This is the early bus style. It's a uh, single setup. In other words, your front is not separated from your rear. I also have a, what I call a cutter brake. Uh, pull it back it operates the left rear wheel push it forward it operates the right rear wheel and I have a little bit more motion than I would like I think I did a good job of bleeding the brakes got the air out so I don't know just going around the block if this is gonna seat enough to really tell the full story at this time everything works they're not like massive power brakes they they work um, you have to push hard this isn't like a modern vehicle I'd say I probably have to push harder than I did before but one of the things that I do that you know <laughs> I gotta take that liability clause as I 
switched wheel cylinders. I put the front wheel cylinders in the rear and the rear wheel cylinders in the front. And that's because of the large rear tires. You have what you call brake bias where the body shifts forward and the front wheels do the majority of their braking. But when you put larger tires with more weight on the back, uh, you get the engineering messed up and uh, by swapping fronts with rears you can somehow get that close back to what the original design was for. I hope this makes sense to you guys and uh, this is more this is more to buggy people and off-roaders. My sand rails I never ran brakes at all on the front I just had them on the back and I ran disc brakes and my uh, uh, everything stayed tight my cutter brake worked real good these um, I'm not sure is the pad seat in on the rotors maybe things will change a little bit I still have to add the emergency brake attachment I'd like to have that and it is uh, mandatory to be legal on the street so okay there we go I want to get this posted and up uh, tonight if possible so Thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Thanks for hanging in there with me. It's uh, been a lot of fun. And uh, talk to you soon. Easy Jeezy out.